Hey, hello everyone. Host AJ Garcia with Garcia Mohome University here. So my guest for today, he is out of Australia. Daytime just now. He is a conversion strategist. He is an entrepreneur and founder at Business Warriors. Derek, how you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastically. Thanks so much for asking, Jose. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, Jared, I know you two, same similar platforms we share, some of the same coaches. And like I was telling off air is I now follow your channel pretty close. I'm actually learning how to do some of the stuff you're talking about, which we'll get into. But for those that don't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm actually not originally, I live in a place at the moment called Western Australia. I come from a very small town called uh, Ta Devonport in Tasmania. It's a town of about 25,000 people. Some people in Australia would say that I am from overseas and international, right? Because we're apparently inbreds in Tasmania and all this sort of stuff, right? So interesting. But um, uh, in 2011, I moved across here to Western Australia and... You know, before that, I had run my own business. I was running an insurance brokerage in Tasmania. We did incredibly well at that. And, you know, when I first started in business, the only thing I knew how to do was to use this one amazing thing, a mobile phone, okay? Mm -hmm. So my only way of being able to know how to market a business was to go down to the news agency at 7.30 a.m. in the morning, pick up the newspaper, scroll across to the classified section where all the advertisements are from businesses and literally just start cold calling, okay? Hmm. Um, so that was my idea of marketing back in, to call it 2007, 2008 in business. So when I moved across here to Western Australia, I actually moved across here with $500 in my bank account, right? And I started, a, I started working over here with a finance brokerage, which is a huge part of my background in finance broking. As part of that business, um, my main role of, at the start was to be a finance broker, understand finance, help people with finance. It was fully online. And this was my first sort of, I guess, aspect or, or, or first time I'd actually gone into any online marketing or any sort of online environment working, right? So I had to learn really quickly now mm -hmm. how to, you know, speak to people on the phone, how to gain trust, how to, you know, convert that person into a sale or in this case, a settlement for a business. Um, and that's without ever meeting anybody, without ever sitting in front of them like the traditional broker would do naturally. Um, as part of that, I then moved on to management roles and I got to sort of see a little bit behind the scenes as to how marketing was run, how to hire people, how to train sales teams, how to convert at a high level and how to make a lot of it really, really simple as well. And there were some things that I noticed within this particular business that made so much sense to me as well. And, and, and I understood exactly what needed to happen to be able to convert like absolute crazy in terms of you know leads to sales and basically there was a big difference because we were spending twenty five thousand dollars a month on advertising on google adwords in those days right and it cost us about fifty dollars to acquire a lead and if we looked at the office wide uh the on average close ratio was one in eight so we started then looking at a level deeper, the successful brokers there, what they were converting at, and then also the, the other brokers that weren't working as six, or weren't going as successfully at their converting as well. And they were converting like one in eight, one in 10, sometimes one in 12 uh, of the leads that were coming through. And there was a very significant difference. We noticed the guys that were closing at one in three were spending a little bit more time on the phone with people, creating more relationships. Uh, they were speaking very differently. We also noticed that, you know, the, it was very, very different to the ones that were converting one in 10, one in 12. Um, so this was like my real biggest eye opener into marketing and what it really takes to convert at a higher level and, you know, in 2014, I, st I started delving into Facebook and, you know, that's when we started to get the remnants of our whole battle plan methodology of marketing and um, on social media specifically. And uh, since 2014, I basically, you know, basically that was my time where 
I was working out this whole methodology. I was testing. I was. I had a, a product. I was selling essential oils online, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> which was which was good fun i tell you right and i sold within two years i sold a quarter of a million dollars worth of essential oils wow um and you know so i kind of worked out this whole methodology and everything but when i found out what well, and i looked at my profit margins of that two hundred fifty thousand, i made 25k right and i was looking at the profit margins going holy shit i'm, I'm not going to break any records doing this um, so then I've gone, okay, what else can I do that can help me expand my impact, but also be able to share with people the knowledge that I had. And at that point I've been selling for 11 years and, uh, basically I moved into a sales coaching environment and I started then speaking directly with the finance, finance business owners who were struggling at selling. And then things kind of evolved from that. We started helping people convert at very high ratios between 30, 50, and even up to 80% close ratios of people that have no idea who the hell they were, right? And had never met these people before because referral business is one thing, as you'd understand. And on the other hand, um, you know, uh, converting someone that has no idea who you are is a completely different situation. So um, then they started asking me, because, you know, how do you market? What do you do? And that's when we founded Business Warriors in 2018 with the idea of, you know, we want to show businesses exactly what they must do to not only, you know, acquire leads and get attention online, but how do you convert it into opportunity? How do you convert it into sales? And yeah. we've been doing that now since 2018. And um, been doing very well at it as a boutique company here in Perth, Western Australia. Now over 140 clients across 10 different countries as well. We've been very blessed to do that. So that's a little bit about me and my my story. No, that's good. You you, see, you definitely know your stuff. You, you can hear um, the confidence is there. You know what you're doing. And you said two things already there that caught my attention. And uh, because yeah, when we're getting out there, and you know, regardless of the product you're selling, it, it's all about get those leads, get those leads. But you never really think about that. Is okay, you got the leads. So what? How many of those are you actually selling? Because that's what's going to matter. You get leads all day long. It doesn't mean. And you said one out of eight. So that's not <laughs> that's not good. So we'll definitely be talking more on that, you know, and for growth, that's what you need is you got to be able to make those sales. Good stuff on that. Uh, on your media, you have a an ad that I, that I saw that was uh, caught my attention and it said to add 37 and 59 leads to your business in 28 days in less battle. Tell us a little bit about that. So because we've been doing this on social media since 2014, we've developed a, a method for someone to follow, okay, that creates uh, attention, um, gathers someone's intrigue, which it has with you, and then a very simple eight-step process that we use to be able to show people how to you know, generate between 37 to 59 leads as a small business, right? Mm -hmm. Now, from that, that's leads. Then we're going to turn the leads into opportunities, then into sales, right? Which is, you know, as you understand, the major thing is about creating trust. Mm -hmm. So the whole process and the method we use is front end attention, right? So there's got to be, you know, we've got to look at who is the client that's going to pay you the most for your service, okay? So take real estate, for example, and buying real estate. Everybody loves the idea of being able to buy real estate. Everyone wants to buy real estate, mm -hmm. okay? So it's very easy to generate leads for real estate, okay? But then the next question is, who's the person that qualifies to purchase real estate, right? Meets the finance terms, right? Then a level deeper than that, Who's the one that's probably not only going to just buy one, but who's going to buy multiple as well, okay? Because Jay Abraham says it best. There's three ways to grow a business. You acquire new customers, you get people to pay you more regularly, or you get them to pay more for your service, okay? So in real estate, it's like, who can spend a million dollars on property? Who can spend two million, three million, right? Especially if you've been looking for investment and things like that as well. And you can use social media for investment too, okay? But it's who's got the money, who will pay more for the service. And then it's about developing your message around that person. Now, 
in social media, it's taken, there's a fair bit of turmoil going around at the moment. I don't know whether you've heard, but there's been an iOS update, 14.5, I think it is, or something. I don't know what we're up to. Um, but basically, that's now allowing people to choose whether they want apps to track them and gather data or not. Okay. So for somebody who, you know, has been building audiences for a very long time on social media now, we have hundreds of thousands of people there in our retargeting audiences. Um, that's now cut out because some people don't want the apps to track them. Okay. That now cuts has cut down by a minimum 30% across our audiences, right? So we have 30% less people that we can now track and retarget through our marketing online. Okay. So this is where the first part of the battle plan method is working more effectively. And there's some positives with this too for businesses, because this is a leveling the playing field now for everybody. So those businesses that don't have the target sorted and don't have that message down pat and sharp, right? It now levels that playing field. So we've found even with our marketing that our costs have gone down per lead, our costs have gone down per uh, acquisition of a client now as well on social media, um, which has been great for us because uh, it means other businesses don't have their messaging as sorted as ours as well. So part of it is, as I said, targeting. The next step, step is the message. The next step after that is crafting the offer. What's the offer that these people are going to put in place? You're going to put in front of these people. Are you going to do a training? Are you going to do a download? Are you going to do a cheat sheet? What is it you're going to do? You're going to give something away for free. Um, there's a great book I want everybody to listen to. It's called the, uh, well, listen to the audio book or grab the book I suggest actually and highlight the hell out of this thing. It's called The Go-Giver. You ever, have you ever read that book? The Go-Giver? The Go-Giver, yes. I'm, I'm writing it down right now. I have not. Okay, so they talk about, um, I think it's the five laws of, fun, uh, of, of success. The right. first one is value right and if you look at it the one quote that has stuck with me from this book for a very long time now is your true value is determined by how much more you give in value mm -hmm. than you take in payment okay? okay so we always say to clients we want to give something away to someone for free okay and a lot of people will go oh, I don't want to give something away for free. Oh, they won't need me then, all this type of stuff. Mm. But we live in a world right now where it's eight seconds, right, of someone's attention span. They'll download, they'll attend a free training of yours. They won't show, they'll get busy. The kids, because the kids came in, they had to go to hospital with the kids, um, <laughs> you know, because they've got a cold or the flu or, um, you know, the kids are just running around the house flat out or the boss called or he walked into me while, while I'm on the phone or a new email came through. I get up to over 3,000, uh, you know, uh, Instagram uh, notifications every single day as well. Yeah. Right. That's just from Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, we've got pages that, you know, have around 2 million views in a 30 day period and accounts reached and all this type of stuff. Um, non paid advertising, right, by the way. So, you know, with the right method, you can still get the attention as well, even using this method without paid advertising, which is another part to it. Right. So giving something away for free and people come to you for the implementation and the help. Okay, so it's your like expertise of your business, your service based business that will help them get the results faster than just like a free download and about 90% of people uh, don't attend trainings or read books or anything like that anyway. Okay, so it's very high percentages of people not doing that. Um, so that's the next step is give something away for free. Uh, number four is retargeting. Okay, so a large percentage of people that come to your landing pages through your marketing, okay? Um, they say it takes between five to seven hits for someone to be able to say, yes, I wanna do something with you or yes, I wanna get access to your thing. In fact, it's probably more like between 20 to 30 now as well due to that eight second barrier of somebody wow. being able to hold attention. Yeah, it's it's a lot now. Um, so. <laughs> 
retar it's it's insanity right so retargeting has got to be a must it's like you know when someone pays you money as a business right uh, which is the hardest thing to get someone to do to pay money whether it be even twenty dollars or five dollars right and we know what jt it's like with jt he can sell a five thousand dollar program right mm -hmm. um but then to get someone to pay twenty dollars a month for millionaire flicks right is a completely yeah. different story and they might look at their credit card bill after a month or two months or something. I'm not using it. I'll get rid of it. Right. It's very different mm -hmm. mindset. Okay. So, you know, retargeting is a must adding value, giving things away for free, mm -hmm. uh, repositioning your offers and your message and things like that through that retargeting process. So it's a very different way to retarget over, over and above, you know, what you put on the front end to a cold audience. Um, number five is structure. You got to structure your account correctly. Um, you don't want overlap on the front end of your marketing campaign. So there's four main levels of marketing. The first one is cold people who don't know who you are, people that haven't taken your front end offer, people that have taken your offer that you want to get to the next step, which is either appointment or purchase a small barrier to entry product, like under a hundred dollars. And then there is your current customers. How do you turn them into long-term clients over and above that? Or how do you get them, which, which is essentially, how do you get them to pay more regularly, right? Using the Jay, Jay Abraham methodology, right? Get people to either become a new customer to grow your business, new customers, get people to pay more regularly, get people to pay more for your service, right? That's the Ascension model. So that's the, what am I up to, five? Um, the number six is automation, right? Um, so it's like fantastic to be able to, you know, do things manually and have that manual aspect to things, but you've got to have automation and automation is done by email and it's done by text message and it's done by messenger. Okay. Open rates on email at the moment is around on average 20 to 30%. We're lucky because we've been doing it our for a long time. Our indoctrination sequences generally get between 40 to 60% open rates. That's just because we've been doing it a while now. We understand that. But text message, there will never, ever, ever be a message that's not opened. <laughs> Everyone always opens a message. So that's 100%, right? Then last Somebody else thing, said that. Yeah, I have heard that. Exactly. If you look at... Domino's, right? I think Domino's is they're they're worldwide, right? So that mm -hmm. everywhere everyone knows what Domino's Pizza is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, multi, I would say, billion dollar company mm -hmm. probably now. I have no idea how big they are, but you know, quite a quite regularly you see a text message come from them, and it's normally like three pizzas for nineteen ninety five, right? And a Coke, and um, you know, the extra fries with that, and whatever else <laughs> that they give to, right? Because they want people to buy a pack. Right. They don't want you to buy one pizza. They want you to buy three pizzas mm -hmm. and they want you to buy a 1.25 Coke and they want you to get a garlic bread. Right. Cause you know, they want to get people to spend more. Um, so quite regularly they'll send a text out as well. Um, and that's just keeping front of mind dominoes. And it's also, you know, going to acquire sales each and every single time based on that high intrinsic value offer that has been put in front of them. The last one is, the sales process to convert. So the last two is based around number one, qualifying somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does someone qualify to be able to work with your business? So this is where the real work's done. This is the, the engine room. Does someone qualify to work with you? Do they not qualify to work with you? Okay, what level do they qualify to work with you? So we usually suggest to people to have a few different levels to meet a few different budgets with people, okay? Um, so, you know, we have finance brokers that sell $500 courses and things like that now as well. Financial planners do the same, right? 
So, you know, if they, someone doesn't qualify to get a property at the moment or their finances aren't quite there, you can educate those people as well to, you know, via high intrinsic value coaching or online course, or that type of stuff, to be able to show them exactly how they can, you know, get to a point where they can buy a property or qualify for finance and all that sort of stuff. And it does recoup some ad spend as part of that and help build a brand. Um, and then the last one as well, which is literally the sales conversation how do you structure it how do you then get someone to pay money to your business that's the process that you go through for that and we've got scripts and sort of i guess how you conduct those conversations because i've been doing sales now since 2007 i've been doing it the hard way right um which is cold calling people out of a newspaper mm -hmm. gathering friggin' attention and then walking onto job, stop, job sites where there's tradies on a roof and I'm saying, don't fall down. I haven't insured you yet, right? Um, you know, basically the process on yeah. exactly what you must go through to convert that. So, and that, that's the battle plan method that we've put together and I guess how you get 37 to 59 leads and, and convert it into new business for you. And no, that's interesting. I mean, there, there's a lot more to it than obviously expected. I mean, this is a process and it's not just the market side, but also like a system set in place. You, you have to have it. And this is why you're successful. Yeah. And why it is needed. One of my questions, you answered a few questions that I had there for you. Give, giving free product, that sort of thing. That's always a question because you do get into this mindset of, well, I'm giving it away. Almost like you're losing out on something, but in reality, it comes back to, uh, to pay you as well. Uh, from the marketing standpoint or side, um, how steady should, in every business is different, of course, product is different, but how often should you advertise? Is this a daily, weekly, monthly, uh, on average? Um, well, our suggestion to a business is... I'm sure you understand like business, the longer you're in the game, the more well you get known mm -hmm. and the more opportunities that come to you. Okay. As part of being in business, the longer you're in business, the better and the more opportunities that come to you. Okay. So our suggestion to, to clients when they start with us, we don't really care what your budget is for marketing, right? What we do say is we say, okay, you choose a budget and I want you to stick to and be consistent with that budget for the next 12 months, right? Mm -hmm. The idea is with marketing, and I did this when I first started, is I started small and I worked my way up, sure. okay? Now, some people then go, okay, what's the guide? Like, you know, what's the best amount? What do you suggest to spend, okay? Um, now, there's a sweet spot at $1,250 a month. Mm. There's just a sweet spot with Facebook and the marketing and, and, and sort of, you know, what converts. I've had in some um, instances with campaigns, I've had you know, some people spending $10 a day or something like that, and it hasn't converted. I've put it up to 30 a day and it's just automatically started converting and then we can just scale it back again. Okay, once that's converting and you know, Facebook has got the data and all that type of stuff as well. Okay, so you got to know these little tricks and these little things that you can do, little hacks, so to speak, to be able to just hack the algorithm and kick it into a gear, into gear in those early stages. And that's why we do have a nine out of 10 literally success rate when launching campaigns that leads come in instantaneously as well, because we have tuned it in over time, but there's still that one, you know, that you know, from time to time, it just doesn't work at the start. And we really have a testing method with all of this as well to really, I guess, kick that into another gear as well. Um, so, you know, you just got to know what you're doing. You got to just have someone beside you to walk you through it, show you the process, but sure. hold your hand through it at least on a worst case scenario basis um, to be able to just say, hey, do this, do that, right? So a lot of what we do now too is we just say, you got to be consistent with it. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a monthly thing for something your business does, right? Coca, if it's good enough for Coca-Cola, and I know some mm -hmm. people will say, you know, it's a billion dollar company, all that sort of stuff, right? But, you know, they got there for a reason, okay? Mm -hmm. The reason why they are as big as what they are now is because they put themselves out there. They marketed themselves. They were different, right? Whenever you think fizzy drink, a lot of us think Coca-Cola, right? So if you want to be known as the real estate guy or, 
you know, in your case, the king of, um, uh, was it? Mobile homes. Uh, sorry? M mobile homes. <laughs> mobile homes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I saw that this morning. I was like, yeah, I love this guy. <laughs> um, so you want to be known as that, right? You got to be in front of people more regularly with that okay and then people will associate you as the king of mobile homes uh and things like that so you know the more regularly and consistently you're in front of people regardless of your budget um the the more well known you become therefore the more mm -hmm. opportunities you gain therefore the more sales your business will get absolutely you mentioned facebook and i think maybe instagram at one point we're also free uh social media platforms are huge massive they keep growing but even starting out, would you say paid advertisements are better or, or can you exceed enough through the free social media to get the marketing out there? Well, there's there's a two pronged approach, right? Instagram at the moment, my belief is the biggest opportunity for businesses right now. And I've got some reasons why um, mm -hmm. Facebook at the moment is predominantly like a paid platform now. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you post on Facebook right now, you'd be lucky for a percentage or 2% of your people to that are following your page. If you have got a big following to see it, if you haven't got a big following, the likelihoods of people seeing it is zero. So it's like a, a paid platform now. Um, and the reason being is because that platform is monetized. So for anybody who has over 10,000 followers now, um, you can turn on and monetize Facebook so that every time someone is watching a video, they have ads going through it and your page then would get paid as a result so much per view or per minute. I forget the, the methods around that or the, the, the what's going on with that. Um, but basically your page gets paid the same as what YouTube is. It's monetized, right? Now, Instagram hasn't got that yet mm -hmm. uh, at all. Okay, and you can reach more people by using hashtags um, and a level deeper. There's a new thing that's been out for probably around a year now as well uh, um, called Instagram Reels. And yes. to someone who and I've got pages right with like 40 followers, right, that has 8000 views on a reel. Oh, wow. Okay, so this yeah, huge, right? 45 followers okay and i'll show you i'll show you as well just to, to prove to sure to video i'll prove to people that too because i like to you know give people a little bit of proof in the pudding so i run a page called entrepreneurs are success so we're building a media company behind business warriors um so this one's one we just started it's got 45 followers now one of the reels just here has 8,562 wow. views. Um, this one here has 1,589. This one here, uh, can you see that? I can, yep. 100. Um, then we've got one here, 1,000, oh, shit, sorry. 1,500, we've got one here at 3,800. You guys get the point, right? But yeah. 45 followers, okay? Now, I think there's about 12 months probably left of that. Okay. That sort of virality that you're going to get. Um, I look at some pages, right? Some people that, you know, basically they got four or five million views on videos and things like that. I mean, that's a lot of traffic. Yeah. That is a lot of traffic. At the yeah. moment, uh, I'm growing, we're growing our business warriors, uh, global page at the moment um a couple of months ago we had about 1800 flat now we're at 2053 so not breaking records or anything like that but we get five to ten leads organically through that every single week okay okay no no paid advertising at all so that that page is gathering some views and we've got you know, 1,900 views on that one there. Uh, we've got 1,700 on that one there. Uh, we've got 1,900 on that one there. 
2,000 on that one there. Uh, in fact, that one's 6,145. That one there is 6,000. So we get five to 10 leads a week from that one organically at the moment. And I think there's about 12 months, my belief is there's about 12 months left of this virality that, that okay. it's got. Then what will happen is because Facebook has, oh, sorry, Instagram or Facebook owns Instagram, by the way. Um, so they basically said that we're going to monetize or we're in the stages of about um, getting this monetization of Instagram done. And then I believe it will go down quite heavily from there. Okay. So, uh, you know, we've got about 12 months or less than 12 months now since the announcement. So I reckon and that viral capacity will go down once they monetize Instagram. So it's just a really good, you know, if you were going to focus anything at the moment, it would be Instagram just from that perspective. And yeah. then when you, when you implement your paid advertising behind it all, it just amplifies everything you do strategy wise. Absolutely. And for those of you watching business warriors global, go hit the like. Subscribe to his Instagram. Absolutely. Good stuff. He's tossing on here. You should be making notes. I know I am. Got my notes going. So always learning. And this is why we make these calls, because everybody has something to bring to the table. Hang around people who know more than you, and you always pick up something. Uh, a couple more questions here, uh, Jared. So, you know, I'm a mobile home investor. I invest in affordability, uh, manufactured housing, that sort of thing. I cover the whole southeast of USA at this time, and my goal is nationwide. I want to take over the whole nation sooner or soon. My question to yeah. you is, because I, it's time to speed this up, and that's what I'm gathering okay. here, is we need to really get that going. So what would be one tip for you in a sense of this? Obviously, paid advertisement is going to have to come in, uh, probably bringing you part of the team somehow <laughs> as part of as well. But what is the tip for yeah. you for me to escalate to that level? Um, so, you know. Getting get adding a hundred thousand dollars to your business, right? And adding a million dollars are two different strategies and two different investments. Okay, so it's got to come down to I know you pro, you're already good at what you do, you're great at what you do, you, you get results, which is all part of it. Okay, the next part is you got to look at okay, what am I who, who is my ideal client? What am I looking for? Am I looking for investment? Am I looking for people that want to do my training school, that type of stuff? Sorry, I haven't done a lot of research into you or anything beforehand, um, but it would depend on, you know, where you are right now as to what, you know, it's going to look like in the future to, to get to that goal. And then it's just a question of what are we going to have to do to be able to get there? Number one is you got to be starting to be more active on these platforms for starters content is king okay mm -hmm. people will come and follow you to make sure that you're a credible source okay to make sure that you know what it is that you're talking about all these mm -hmm. types of things because you know at the start they don't trust you okay mm -hmm. so we got to build trust we got to build a relationship with these with people there we got to respond to people when they comment all that type of stuff okay um then the next level is we got to invest into the brand for marketing Okay. Um, and assets. Okay. So part of it is uh, do what, what assets does your business currently have that can be valuable to your marketing campaigns? So do you have any downloads at the moment, any PDFs, any books that you've created or, or written? Okay. Um, do you have any online trainings that you've conducted or pre-recorded or anything like that as well? next level and that would be stuff we'd go okay cool what can we use out of all of this to be able to create a high intrinsic value offer that people are going to see as a no-brainer and are going to be intrigued to want to know more about then from there it's literally launch paid advertisements it is uh you know structure the account correctly so that we're hitting new people every day targeting the areas that you want to target and then over and above that, it's just automating certain parts of the process and filtering through to either A, sales calls or purchase a low barrier entry product in some way, shape or form. And then it filtrates further through there into the next steps of the sales process. So it's really, I guess, defining overall strategy to start with. What is that strategy? Um, 
to be able to start with? What do you have right now in collateral to be able to utilize for marketing? And that is even as well on top of this, the size of your database, which matters, okay? How many contacts, how many ideal clients do you have in your database? How many people you work with? Because let's say, for example, if you have 2,000 people that are homeowners in Louisiana, for example, or something, um, then, you know, that's a really good asset now to utilize for marketing throughout the whole United States to find more people that are homeowners as well. Okay. Thank so, you. you know, or that are investors or that are, you know, the types of people that invest into training courses to learn this, right? So assets and contacts and people that you have there with and things that you have for your business are really valuable and people just don't realize what they're sitting on. So a lot of the time, it's just deriving a strategy on what you have. If you don't have something, then it would need to be created as part of that. Absolutely. No. And I have a saying, you cannot ever over advertise. But uh, from what I'm getting here is definitely sooner or later, you're going to have to pay for advertisement. It's not going to come free. I mean, it's how much you're willing to put into it. You know, also, what would you advise uh, to somebody getting started into a business, needing marketing and trying to get into this? What, what would you advise to them? Um, getting started in business, um, number one, I would say brand, right? Branding is important regardless of what anyone says. Um, but you are the biggest asset in the early stages, right? So the more well-known you become in the early stages and branding you is really important. Um, there's a really good company I follow, um, probably one of the biggest in the business coaching space for um, you know, corporations right across the world. They work with a lot of really big corporations. The company's name is Dent Global. And they basically say the whole sort of zero to $2 million of a business owner's journey, journey is all about a personal brand, okay? So your personal brand, your credibility, how well you are known, okay? So number one, if you are just getting started, you got to develop a personal brand and a personality brand, Okay. Um, and you've got to get your message correct, your vision, your mission, that type of stuff, what it is that you're creating, what the problem is specifically that you solve as a business owner as well. You got to get the basics down pat. You got to get the foundations in place. It's like, you know, I'm going to go and build a house, but I'm just going to put the roof on first, right? You need a solid foundation before you put a roof on right? Um, things just going to be sitting on the ground and you're going to be forever trying to put the foundation under that. And then you're going to be forever trying to put the struts <laughs> and all this other stuff in place, right? It's going to take you forever. Um, so you need to get the, you know, the slab down first, right? Here in Western Australia, it's all sand. Okay. So sand, and then we've got a cement foundation. Um, back in Tassie, where I'm from, it's hard red dirt. <laughs> Very different areas right. i was surprised when i came to western australia it's all sand um so it comes from the house and everything is everything built on sand i don't know why it's weird. anyway um so <laughs> so you got to get the foundations right to start with then you got to develop an asset um portfolio for your business so number one you got to show results okay mm -hmm. you got to show that you can get results for people in some way shape or form so mm -hmm. we always suggest you do a market test in the early stages of business um, to prove whether your product can be sold and mm. is something that the marketplace finds valuable. You don't want to go creating everything in the whole entire world to only find out, don't down, no one wants to buy it. <laughs> and regardless of whether you see other people in the industry that are doing it and other people that are selling it, you still got to test it because it's your brand, right? Your message, who you are, can you sell it, right? Is really important. And you've got to have testimonials, proof, social mm. proof to show that you can do that sure. then from there it's about developing assets right um which you know, social proof is one asset right testimonials case studies people have got results but also what can you give away in marketing campaigns and things like that as well so it's developing we normally say to people like your own sort of mini version of a, a book that you can give away for free gives mm -hmm. instant credit credibility we can show that it's a product because people are 30 to 40 percent more likely to buy if they can see that they're mm -hmm. getting a product a physical something in the marketing campaign if you can show them that um, we had massive increases when we started showing things as products finished products 
Um, and then from there, it's just about literally to get your business off the ground. It's like a rocket ship. Okay. In the early stages, it takes a rocket a long time and a lot of energy to get off the ground. So you're going to have to put in additional hours. You're going to have to work. It's going to be hard. You're going to, you know, right. you're going to fail. You're going to lose sales. You're going to do all this sort of stuff in the early stages. Right. It's like training the brand new salesperson. Um, but if you're consistent and you do the work, you will see the results, you will get off the ground. And what happens to the rocket when they get it, it gets into outer space, it drops off its, you know, cylinders and whatever, and it cruises, okay? Um, not saying that business will be cruisy for you, but it will get a little bit easier, right? Um, and then, you know, if you want to go to a new level, then it's about different strategy. Or you can just cruise at the level you're at, depends on what people want to do, of course. Right. Now, interesting stuff. We can keep on asking you this. I mean, you, you have a real passion for it. You can tell the way you're talking. So that's great stuff. And we will be talking more on this. Uh, I, I'm interested. I'm intrigued by this. Last question for you. What is your best uh, success quote? Everybody has a success quote. Well, uh, I will tell you, it is, it is the one I've already mentioned today. Your true value is determined by how much more you're given value than you take in payment. And it's so true because if there, there's a reason why someone doesn't buy for you from you, so if you're charging $10,000 for a service, you got to make that value $10,001, right? Your value has got to be worth $10,001 to be able to get someone to go, yep, I want to do business. So you got to project that. Um, and it, it is my favorite quote, something that's stuck with me for many, many years. Before that, I used to be a, a cyclist many years ago. And I used to love Lance Armstrong, despite what a lot of people say about him. Mm. I actually uh, met a guy named as well, Greg LeMond, three-time Tour de France winner, both US people. Um, so one of the quotes and everything from Lance Armstrong is, pain, tempor pain is temporary, glory lasts forever. Yeah, good, good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Jared, how can people connect with you? Um, follow me on Instagram, real Jared Harmon, right? Just real Jared Harmon. You'll find me. That's the best way to follow me or post content, things like that on there. Uh, you could follow us on Facebook as well. Real Jared Harmon. You, we run a show twice a week that you can jump on and get marketing advice. You can ask questions, things like that as well. Um, we also run a private community. So if you want to get access to some exclusive stuff as well, a little bit of behind the scenes of what we do and how we do things too, um, you can basically just shoot me a DM on either Facebook or Instagram, just say the word group, and I'll shoot you through a private invite to that group. So you can, you can sort of see what we're doing behind the scenes as well. That'd be the best way to uh, get in contact with us. Okay. Good stuff. And I'll link those to the video here. So for those of you who are watching, you'll be able to just go click on that and go straight to Jared's stuff. So absolutely. Thank you for coming on our show here. We'll, we'll have a few questions after the air, but uh, Jared, thank you for your time, sir. <laughs>